Hello and welcome back to another video on drone flight training. Today I want to talk about registration. I see a lot of questions online about people asking, should I register my drone? How do I register my drone? How long is it good for? What do I do if I sell my drone? So I decided to put everything together in one video, once and for all, answer all the different questions about registration. So here's what I'm going to talk about during this uh, video. The first thing is the difference between the model aircraft and the non-model aircraft. This is kind of important when we talk about registration and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to talk about the basic requirements for registration and then also I'm going to go into who is eligible to register a drone in the United States including foreign nationals because there is something a little bit different about that and then I'm going to go over the question of what if your registration actually changes the information in your registration changes that includes if you destroy a drone or if you actually sell your drone so we'll go over what you need to do as per the regulation. And the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how long the registration is good for on both sides of the model aircraft and the non-model aircraft. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is how to display the registration number on your drone. There has been a lot of questions online and then some misinformation, so I wanted to clarify that. Everything I'm talking about here is located in 14 CFR Part 48, which is the information about registration and marking requirements for small unmanned aircraft. So you can go into the Federal Aviation Regulation and find this 14 CFR uh, part, four, uh, part 48, and then you'll see everything that I'm going to tell you. I'm actually going to tell you where I found the information, so if you have any question, you can always go back. I'm not going to give you all the registration details, just because it gets kind of boring, but I'll give you the, the, the most important information in there. So the first question is, model aircraft or not model aircraft? What does that mean? Well, Section 336 is going to define a model aircraft as an N-man aircraft. That is, there's three things. First off, it's capable of sustained flight in the atmosphere. Okay, that's kind of a given. The second thing is flown within visual line of sight. Okay, this is important, visual line of sight. We talked about this in my other courses that I have available online, where we talk about the requirement for flying your drone within line of sight. You need to keep it in sight at all time. The last thing that's important here in the, the model aircraft definition is it has to be flown for hobby or it has to be flown for recreational purposes, okay? Recreational purposes only. So this is part 336. This is, if you look in the regulation, they talk about model aircraft or not model aircraft, or it, they actually say other than model aircraft, that this is what they're talking about. So when we talk about model aircraft, we're talking about people flying for fun. When we talk about other than model aircraft, we're talking about people flying uh, under part 107, uh, what some people refer to as commercial purposes. Some of the basic requirements for registering your drone is going to be found in part 48 under uh, paragraph 15. 4815 says an aircraft has to weigh between 0.55, so more than 0.55 pounds, so half a pound, and less than 55 pounds. Okay, that's one of the requirements. Also, what it says in 4825 under section B, it says a small unmanned aircraft basically must be registered by the owner of the aircraft, which makes sense, unless the owner is less than 13 years old. So if you have a, a son or a daughter and they have a drone, you have to register it for them if they are less than 13 years old. I thought that's, that was kind of important and I had to mention it in here. In section 4830, it talks about the fee, and this is kind of something that comes back a lot, is how much do I need to pay for registration? Well, the answer is it's five bucks. It's five dollars going to the FAA, and if you paid more than five dollars, then you probably went to one of these sites that's not really legitimate. They're going to take your information and, and say that they're going to file under your name, and they're going to charge you 30 or 40 dollars. You don't need to do this. The registration is very simple. You can do it yourself. You have to go in a .gov website. I'm going to give you the link in a minute. Now, there is some confusion from time to time about how much you need to pay and do you need to register for all your aircraft. Here's the answer. If you're flying as a hobbyist, okay, under section 336 or part 101, it's the same thing, then you are only going to pay $5 for you as one person and then they'll give you a registration number and that registration number is good for as many drones as you have. Now, if you are operating under part 107, then you're going to pay $5 for each of the aircraft that you own and, and so if you have 10 aircraft, then you're going to pay $50 in registration. If you're a hobbyist, if you have 10 aircraft, you're going to pay $5, and then that same number applies for all of them. 
The place where you're going to do this, there's only one place and it's the FA Drone Zone website. If you look on this channel, you will see that I have some information available on how to register your drone under either section 336 or part 107. Make sure you pick the right one. Part 107 is only going to apply if you have a remote pilot certificate. If you don't have one, you're still gonna be able to register your drone commercially, but it's not gonna do any good because you're technically not allowed to fly under part 107. So get your license and then you have to register uh, in, in the drone zone under part 107. You can also still be registered under part 336. I have both, I have my, my part 107 and sometimes I fly as a hobbyist. So I have both numbers available. It's two separate numbers and both of them are uh, re um, recorded on my drone. And I'll get to that in a minute of how you're gonna record that on your drone. Under 4820, what we have is the eligibility for registration. Who is eligible to register a drone in the United States? Now you can only register a drone in the United States if it has not been registered under the law of a foreign country. If you're coming in into the country and somebody, and you have that drone already registered um, somewhere else in a different country, then technically you can't do it this way. And I'm gonna show you in a minute how you would do it. So if you're a foreigner visiting the US, then there's gonna be a slightly different process for you to follow. You can only register a drone in the United States if you are a US citizen or if you are a legal alien, kind of, a permanent resident of the United States, for example, or if you're here uh, lawfully in the US on a visa, for example. There's a third section if you have a, a company, an, a, a limited uh, liability company, for example, I'm not gonna go through that, but you have to be a US citizen. Now, what it also says in the regulation under 41.120, subparagraph A, it actually says that the registration is going to be invalid if the aircraft is registered in a foreign country already. So be careful with this. If you're coming from a different country and it's already registered somewhere else, you can't re-register it in the US. So you're gonna say, then what about foreign nationals? How do you do this? Well, if you want to operate your drone exclusively as a hobbyist in the United States, then you can actually register it under section 336, following the typical process that everybody's also gonna do. The certificate that you will get is not necessarily called a registration certificate. It's more a certificate of ownership. It's a recognition of ownership rather than a, a registration certificate. It works the same way. It bears the, the same uh, power if you want. It's just called slightly differently. So uh, just, just be aware of that. And then the last thing is if you want to operate in the U.S. as a commercial operator, then you have to get a special a registration with the Department of Transportation. There's a lot more information about this under part 375, not part 48, part 375. If you wanna see what it takes to fly an aircraft in the US that was registered somewhere else, then you have to follow that step. So if you're coming to the US to fly commercially, uh, you definitely wanna go through these steps and, and not get in trouble with the FAA in case something happens. The next thing is under part 48105 under subsection B, it's gonna say, what do you need to do to maintain current information? The FA says that the holder of the certificate of registration, basically your registration from the drone zone, must update the information in the system within 14 days of any changes, okay? And changes are any of the following. The first one is if there is a change in the information provided initially. So for example, if you change your address, then you have to provide it within uh, within 14 days. Now remember on top of this as well, if you have a part 107 license, you need to tell the FAA within 30 days of a change of address. That's for your license. For your registration, it's within 14 days. The other thing is, if you're going to either sell the aircraft or if you're gonna transfer ownership or if it's gonna be destroyed, then you have to go in the FAA drone zone and cancel that registration. I actually just did that recently and I'll show you in a minute what it looks like in the FAA drone zone, but you have to go and do that because technically it's like selling your car to someone. You wanna make sure that you transfer the ownership uh, when you sell it to somebody else uh, in case something happens that you're no longer liable. Same exact thing with your drone. Make sure you do this within 14 days, okay, 14 days. And the reason I'm mentioning all this, by the way, is this may be on your part 107 exam. The FAA is updating the questions constantly, and there's been some reports of, um, of questions related to part 48. Now, in terms of renewal, how long is your registration good for? Well, it expires every three years, okay? Now, be careful. 
Everything that we talk about usually in aviation is called calendar month. So one year is going to be 12 calendar months, which means that uh, by the end of the month, 12 months later is when you need to do the renewal. In this case, this is not 36 calendar months. It's actually 12 years, uh, 12 years. It's actually three years to the dot. So if you registered on December 15 of 2018, then on December 15 of 2021, three years later, is when your registration is going to expire, okay? Or it needs to be renewed. The renewal can also be done up to six months in advance before the, uh, the expiration date of your registration. Now, a side note here, if you have actually registered, and, and some of you may, may remember this if you've been in this, uh, in this hobby for long enough, at one point, when, when this first all started, the FAA said, you have to register your drone. And then somebody took them to court and said, you can't force us to register the drone. And, and those people actually won. So the FAA said, well, you don't have to register your drone anymore unless you're flying commercially. At that point, some people requested their refund, the $5 they requested to get that money back. And then the FAA came back and said, hey, guess what? Now you really have to register. Anyone that flies a drone has to register the drone. So this is what that last line is saying here. If you registered your drone prior to December 12, 2017, and you did not request a refund, then your expiration date is going to be extended to December 12 of 2020. Now, December 12, 2017 is when they repassed the law that said that you have to register your drone for real this time. So, um, for example, in my case, I had registered prior to December 12, 2017. So my registration was actually extended to December 12, 2020, even though technically it should have expired before that. This right here is the th section 336 number. This is what it's gonna look like. Again, there is no drone information available right here, just the tail number or the, the registration number that needs to be affixed to your drone. And I'm gonna talk about this in a second, how and where we're gonna put that number. Speaking of registration, this is what you're gonna get when you're done. In this case, this is my registration for my part 107, and it says certificate of registration. You need to have this available with you, by the way, either on paper or electronically. So I have a copy of mine saved in my file. So if I'm on the field, I can always pull it on my iPad or on my phone and show it to the inspector. It's got your name, it's got the type of aircraft that you're gonna be flying. It's gonna have the serial number, I blacked that out. And then it's gonna have your registration number and then when it was issued and when it's going to expire. I just bought this drone not too long ago, so this is uh, kind of a new registration for me for this drone. And again, this is part 107, so it is specific to a drone. If you were to look at the one for part 336, it's gonna be just a number with no real um, uh, aircraft detail. It's just gonna tell you basically one number for all of your drones. The last part of this video, I wanna talk about the display and the location of that number. The number that they gave you, the registration number, has to be put on the drone. And there's three requirements. And the first one is that it has to be maintained in good condition. It has to be legible, which makes sense, right? The second one is it has to be affixed to the aircraft for the duration of the operation. Again, that kind of makes sense. If you think about the registration number, for example, on an aircraft, the N number, we call it, the tail number, well, that's on at all time. Same thing for your drone, essentially. And the last thing is it has to be readily available during inspection. This right here is the PDF from the FAA that explains where you need to put it. Please, if you like these videos, give, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. I will be adding more content, especially during this break right now where I have more time to record, so I'm gonna be getting on this. I have a lot of topics that I wanna cover. The more people subscribe, the more motivated I am to do this, so please go ahead and do so, and then I'll see you for the next video.